Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles this morning <coughs> to Philippians in chapter 2. This is a continuation of the message from last week. Put on Christ Jesus. But as I begin to pray even about the message for this week, and about how there are so many places in the Scriptures to where it refers to these things, about putting on Christ, taking off certain things, but putting on righteousness. In Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 1 today, it says this, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you this morning, God, as we just ask for your blessed presence today to be with us, Father. Allow your presence to pierce our hardened hearts, God, that we might come to you humbly, boldly, Father, before the throne of grace. But Lord, that we might learn today to be more like Christ, to put on Christ Jesus, that others will see Christ in us, living through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I tell you, when I look at that verse 5 there and it says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, that's the way we should be. That's the way that Christians should operate their lives. Unfortunately, too often we allow the flesh to overtake us. And you know, it's it happens. I'm going to tell you it happens. And that's just a part of life because we live in a fallen world. But we are supposed to become more mature as that we grow in Christ. And so that we're not babes in Christ anymore, but we become mature in Christ Jesus. And as we look at this, it goes on into verse 6 and it says, Who being in the form of God, Jesus Christ, that's who's talking about. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We believe as a Trinitarian belief in a Christian that we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and that these three are one. They are in unison everything that they do. But made Himself, there again, speaking of Jesus, but made Himself of no reputation and took upon Him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Jesus became obedient. He humbled himself. And as it says here, not only obedient, but to the obedience to the death on the cross. When it finally rolls around, it goes on there and it says, Wherefore God, God the Father, also hath highly exalted him, Jesus Christ, and gave him, Jesus Christ, a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow! That is powerful in the Scriptures when you see and understand what that the Apostle Paul is actually referring to here. Wherefore God the Father hath also highly exalted Jesus Christ and gave Him a name which is above every name. Amen. There is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved but by the name of Jesus. Amen. We need to understand that it was His shed blood on the cross of Calvary that cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness. Amen. So when you go out and you witness to people and you ask, somebody asks you, well, what, what did Jesus do for me? You know, what can Jesus do for me now? You can tell them it was because of His blood. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. It was because of His blood He became that sacrifice for our sin. 
That's what we as Christian believers, when we witness to others, need to understand. We tell people they need Jesus. Why? Why do I need Jesus? I'll tell you why you need Jesus, because when you stand before the God of gods and you stand before the God of judgment, the only thing that you have to be able to lean upon is I've got a sacrifice. Oh yeah, it's around here so much. Oh yeah, it's the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Right. Because if you go on your good works, you ain't getting in. That's right. Okay, That's right. now we have some new people here today, and sometimes I use words that are like ain't, and I know that it is not proper, but it gets the point across. Because I'm telling you, you need Jesus and all these lost sinners who need Christ in their life. We need to love them. We don't need to. It's not our job to condemn them. It's our job to take them the gospel of Jesus Christ and do the best that we can to give an answer according to every question that they might ask us concerning our faith. What if you were to be asked tomorrow? And I, I just got to be honest with you. Because it's happened to me before. You know, I've been out trying to witness to somebody and then all of a sudden somebody said, well, tell me about it. Okay. <laughs> I can't get it out right now. <sighs> Have you ever had that happen? If you've never had that happen, then you've not really witnessed to somebody the way you need to. I'm going to tell you something right now. When I was up here singing, I about lost it up here singing because I looked over at Nate. And Nate was over here and he was just worshiping the Lord. Praise and I'm telling you, I couldn't even look at Nate. Praise because that little boy right over there who has seen miracles, who that, that turkey he was talking about this morning, that was a miracle because the doctors, the, the vet said, normally something like that to where it, it, it exposes the bone and it comes out the way that it did. That, that turkey ain't going to live. Well, guess what? God defied that. Amen. And that turkey's doing great. But it came because somebody has a heart for God and had prayer. Amen. And took the time to nurture something back to health that didn't have a chance. Amen. That's what we need to do with people in the world today. We need to be trying to nurture them back to health in Christ Jesus and, set, and just in simple say, well, you're a lost cause. Forget you. No, we need to have enough love and compassion in our heart that we can reach out to a lost and dying world. And I'm telling you, they're right here in our community and they don't even know they need Jesus. But we've got to have enough love and compassion that they see something different yes. in us. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. They need to see something different in us that they might desire to have what we have for that opportunity. Whenever that it says there that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, things in heaven and things under the earth, and things, or things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to tell you, that will happen. You have heard me say before, even the devil himself is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The devils, whenever that Jesus wound up at the synagogue and they began to speak out, are you here to torment us before our time? They knew who he was. The problem is, is we don't know in society today because we have gotten so far away from God, we don't know who he is anymore. Right. As a nation, we have gotten so far. There are people that think they know there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Well, I'm telling you, without Jesus, that's where we're all headed. But ultimately, whether you're a saint or whether you're a sinner, on the day of judgment, and when there's no doubt in your mind, there's not going to be any atheist on that day of judgment. <laughs> Because when they stand before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and before the God Almighty upon the throne, there's not going to be any questions. He's the Lord. But at that point, if they don't have Him, they're going to wish they had. Because there is no hope for them at that time before the great white throne judgments. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Now remember our message this morning is put on Jesus or Christ Jesus and as we turn here, we need to look and see how did Jesus act? What did He do? How did He treat His disciples? How did He treat those others that were around Him? In John in chapter 13, starting in verse 1, it says, Now, before the feast, 
of the Passover and when Jesus knew that it was His hour was come that He should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. Notice how that it's, He loved them unto the end. And supper, and supper being ended, the devil having put on, uh, now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. I'm going to stop there for a minute. You've got to understand, Jesus knew exactly who he was. He knew where he came from from, but he also, even at this point, knew exactly where he was going. You know, I think that's what we as Christians sometimes need to understand, that we understand where we're going. Why are we living this Christian life? Is it really worth it? You know, everybody else seems to be out there having fun, doing what they want, going to the bars, living in riotous life, just laughing and living it up. Yeah. Now. But you see, we need to live for that which is to come. We need to put those things behind us that we might move forward in the things of faith concerning God. Because you know what? One of these days we will be in eternity with Him. Our life, the Bible says in the book of James, is but a vapor. It's here. It's gone. And it is just for such a short time. That's why we need to encourage our teenagers. We need to encourage our young adults to stay fast to the faith of God that they might not waver in their faith. We need to encourage some of you older seasoned individuals. Did I say that right, Johnny? We need to encourage some of the older individuals to stay fast in the faith so that you can be the one that encourages those younger ones that we raise them up in the ways of the Lord, nurturing them, bringing them up in such a way that they see that righteous living has something profitable to it Amen. in the way that we live. Amen. I want to tell you, you don't wake up with a hangover on Sunday morning or Monday morning after being in a good church service. Amen. After you go to the bar on Friday or Saturday night and you live it up, you're probably going to wake up with a hangover. Amen. We don't need that. We need to wake up in the joy of the Lord. That we are being refreshed every day. That our lives are being, in fact, being exalted to Him because Amen. as we lift our lives up to Him, we're living for Him. In Him we live and move and have our being. Praise God. Moving on here. I wanted to bring that point out. He knew where He came from. He knew where He was going to. Verse 4. He, he riseth uh, from sup and uh, laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself after the uh, and after he excuse me after that he had poured water into a, a basin and began to wash his disciples feet to wipe them with the towel therewith he was girded then came he to Simon Peter and Peter saith unto him lord dost thou wash my feet now remember He's already washed some of the other disciples' feet. He's already been through James and maybe some of the others there. That their feet were, but when he came to Peter, you know, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thou not, thou hast no part with me. You know, we need to allow Jesus to wash over us, to cleanse us. Because when we don't allow Him to do that, He says, I'll have no part with you. You'll have no part with me. Simon Peter, when he realizes, well, look, if you want to wash my feet, if, he says, Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my head and my hands. Just wash me all over. Jesus said to him in that, He said, he that is washed needeth not say to be washed by his feet. But this uh, clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. Why did he say, but not all? For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he say, ye are not all clean. 
Do you know there are people that sit in church every week? They might be faithful to go to church, but you know what? They're really not clean because they really haven't yielded themselves over to the things of the Lord because you can't have one foot in the world and have one foot in the house of God or Amen. the things of God and think everything's going to be okay. Amen. We need to be loving people. We need to be doing these things. But even Jesus washed the feet there again of Judas Iscariot and he knew when he washed his feet he wasn't all clean. Even though he did that symbolically and did that act, he knew ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, Know that ye, know ye what I have done unto you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Well, wow, Jesus is here giving us an awesome example of what that we as brothers and sisters in Christ should be doing for others. Now, if it's actually washing feet, that's great. But what about just simply serving one another? Simply being willing to be a servant to your brothers and sisters because that's what Jesus Christ did for his disciples even at this. For I have given you an example that ye should do this as I have done to you. One of the scriptures that I also wrote down was from Luke in chapter 6 and verse 31, which is the golden rule as that we used to teach. And it's, as ye, as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also unto them likewise. That was the golden rule. As you would have them do unto you, do unto them. If you want people to treat you right, you treat people right as well. If you don't want to be done wrong, don't do somebody wrong. You know, if we just simply live by those principles like that, which are the teachings of Christ on the Sermon on the Mount, I'll tell you what, the world would be a lot better. Right. But there again, we've gotten so far away from the things of God, it's do unto others before they do unto you. I'm sorry, but that seems to be the way of the world today, but that is not the way of God. I'm telling you the way of God and what that we should do and how that we should go. These are for an example that He did these things. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye knew these, th if you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. This morning in Sunday school, we also brought up the portion of Scripture that says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And here we find where Jesus says, If ye know these things, and happy are ye if you do them. I'm telling you, let's do something about it. Yes. Let's serve one another. Let's serve others. And in doing so, we serve God. Amen. Why am I saying all this? Is because I want you to be more like Jesus. The question is, is how many of you want to be more like Jesus? I think every one of us here this morning would probably say, well, yeah, I want to be more like Jesus. That's why I'm here. But you see, you have to yield yourself over to that to be willing to say, all right, Lord, here I am. Use me. Use me as I am. I've got fault. I've got flaws. Anybody else have flaws in here? Yeah, we all have flaws. But you know what? Lord, here I am. Use me. With all my flaws, with all my problems, I want to serve you. And you will be surprised how many opportunities will open up right before your very eyes. But you have to be willing to say, all right, Lord, here I am. You see, that's the problem with the church today is we're still, we want to come to church to be served. But what we need to do is serve one another in the things of the Lord. Do you know you need church? How many of you know that? Amen. That's why you're here today, right? You need the church. But something that I think people sometimes forget is that the church needs you as well. You see, it's kind of a dual thing there. Because this is where God intended for us to be, to come, to live, to grow together as the body of Christ. Yes, each and every one of us have our own homes, our own individual families. But when we corporately come together as the body of Christ, we receive encouragement one from another. We receive strength whenever that we might be weak because we who are strong need to uphold the weak, but if they never come, what can it do? 
What can we really do? We can call people on the telephone. Sometimes that's the only opportunity that we may have is to call someone on the phone if they can't come. But when we can come and we can be at the house of God, we need to be here for the neighbor next right to us. Because you may be the very individual that is strengthening that individual to help them make it through this next week because they've had a hard week. Anybody had a hard week? <coughs> yeah. You come to church to be strengthened. You come to church to receive strength from the Lord. You come to church to receive the Word of God because it's His Word that strengthens us. Yes. Turn with me, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 in the New Testament. I'm going to start at verse 21. I cut some of this down a little bit. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Cut that down some. Ephesians chapter 4, but starting in verse 21 through 27. If so be that she have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Amen. That he put off concerning the former conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds. You know, we talked a little bit on this last week about renewing your mind, having your mind renewed in Christ. We've got to get that old stuff out of there. And what do you do when you take something out? You need to put something good back in there. How many of you know that if you don't put something good back in there, something else may try to creep back in? You got a closet? How many of you got a closet that you've cleaned out? You know, it was just full of a bunch of, bunch of junk. And you know, I've I, I got to clean that closet out. So you clean the closet out, and it's all empty. But if you don't watch it, you just keep shoving stuff back in that closet. Amen. And before you know it, it's just as cluttered, as bad, if not worse than what it was before because you didn't take care of the clutter and fill it with something it needed to be filled with. Or you didn't organize it the way it needed to be organized. And our minds are that way sometimes. That's why we need to be renewed in our minds to where that we get our minds organized. And when you have bad thoughts come into your mind, you just simply say, that's not a God, I don't accept it. And you know what's bad. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. And when you have those thoughts coming, I don't, I don't accept that. That's not of God. I rebuke that devil. <laughs> Why? Because you're retraining your mind. You're renewing your mind in Christ Jesus. And that's the way He wants us to be as that we do that. Verse 24 as it goes on, and that she put on the new man. That's part of this aspect of putting that on, renewing that mind which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now think about that. Righteousness and true holiness. Those are the things that we need to be filling our mind with. What goes in the body is what comes out of the body. What you know, in, is in the heart comes out of the mouth. So what you put in is going to come out. I want to have righteousness and holiness and goodness and mercy and truth come out of me. Therefore, Put away lying, speaking every man truth which is with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. That's why we're not just simply individual Christians out here by ourselves. We are one of another. We are part of the body of Christ. And when we begin to understand that, when you hurt, I should hurt. When I stub my toe, you should feel an effect. In fact, I had a, a dear sister in the Lord just yesterday. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of had a rough day yesterday. Just being honest with you. Maybe I shouldn't be so honest with you, right? No, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a rough day yesterday. And did you know there was a dear sister that was there at that meeting and she said, Robert, what's, what's wrong? Because she recognized, even though I wasn't really trying to show or say anything that things were bothering me, it was. And she recognized that because she was sensitive enough to know that I was hurting. And you know, sometimes you don't see it. Sometimes people put pretty good mask on. Sometimes people put a pretty good face on and you can hold it there for a while. But whenever that you're by yourself and you're alone, you got to let that off. You got to take that off and you got to give it to God. 
And I want you to know that there are people that are hurting out there that if we're not sensitive enough, we can just scam over something and, it, and you know what, they just let them go on. But if we're sensitive to the Spirit and we're walking in the power of love, the love of God, He'll open those doors for you to be able to be that ointment that might come and to help heal that heart or to simply let that wound heal that they may have. Can you do that in your life? Are you willing to allow that? You know, we don't have to always be tough. Sometimes we need to be tender there as well. Moving on here, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Okay, that's a good one. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, and neither give place to the devil. There are times that we open doors and we leave them open and it's giving place to the devil. I'm telling you, we need to shut those doors. We don't want to have anything to do with him. Turn with me to Romans, the chapter 13, as Marilyn comes to the piano, and Jim comes up. And Johnny, I guess you're leading the in song today too. Romans chapter 13. I do have a little bit left I'm going to say here, but at least you'll be where you need to be. Romans chapter 13, I am going to start in verse 10 there. Actually there in verse 9, the last of that verse in, in verse 9 says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time that now is, high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It's high time, my brothers and sisters, that we awake out of sleep. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in uh, tamering and wantonness, and not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. As we sing this next song this morning, as a Johnny leads us in worship, will you allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart? Will you allow Him to take some things out and maybe put some things in? Because that's what we need to do. Because we're talking about eternal things. Yes, I see that. Be tender enough. Be tender enough that you can let some things go and let God renew you in Christ. Amen. God sent His Son They called Him Jesus He came to
Oh, <laughs> 